You know, as a matter of fact, I had people that told me point blank they were afraid to like a picture of mine because they would come up that it, their name liked my my thing, and they were concerned because they would get so much hate for liking my video. Just like a nice big golden child. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's not hot. <coughs> we first, you know, we yeah. first imported, and uh, this one's shedding now. Let's sit next to you. I would love if you sat next to me. Ow! They can Don't still cross the streams, whatever you do. We won't. <laughs> but why, Jeez. dude? Brian, the first thing I ask you. Yes. That's very important is, do not attempt to shed her because it's <laughs> abuse. I, I always say that there's these like these little points that that the reptile community stick to that are really. I think it's weird that sometimes we want this hill to die on, right? And, and one of the things is, is that like, I think um, the shedding thing is one. The shedding thing is like, if you shed a snake, it's gonna hurt the animal. The problem with this is when there is a viral trend going around, everyone kind of jumps on it that can do whatever that trend is, you know? You did a great job of explaining this in the sense that like when it's ready to shed, it needs to come off. You don't want to pre-shed it. You said like you don't want to shed a snake before. But you can see right now, for whatever reason, like you said, maybe a little desiccated, it needs to shed. Sometimes it just has to make you safety. So sometimes uh, they just don't get enough humidity or whatever. It's just, well, we're going, we're going into the retake breeding yeah. season right now. Uh, big snakes, it is harder. Harder to get enough humidity or water source. Uh oh, you're doing it. I, dude, I, doing I'm all it. about shedding. You're doing it. <clears throat> oh my God. Listen, if you listen closely, you can hear a scream. <laughs> Hang on, this side, you just gotta do it like that. You gotta see the whole thing. Come on, Kevin. Oh, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't know. You're the YouTube you star. To okay, please. TikTok star. TikTok. TikTok. Let's get it right. No, <laughs> no, I'm just joking with you. No, I, I, what I'm saying is I think that there are silly things that, e like even novice reptile people will continue to say that with no basis of like why, you know, like like if I help this snake, if this snake was to rub up against a rock, it's completely fine. But if you take your hand and do it, it's somehow hurting the animal. And that just seems really weird to me, you know, that that, that would be a talking point that almost everyone that keeps reptiles will kind of say that, right? And I don't understand because obviously it's good for the snake to get the shed off. Well, and also, so as we work with these animals and socialize them, you really want to basically get them where you can pretty much do anything, which means yeah. I put in my hands in her face and I do all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And and she is racing right now. So we're at the beginning of retic breeding season. So what happens a lot of times with your female retics, they be they go into this like race mode. Yeah. And I think what that would do in the wild is they're gonna get them out to encounter a male. So mm -hmm. they, they they maybe stop being sedentary, and then suddenly just go on this move. And even even though you see she has no ill will. She is moving. Yeah, she's moving a lot. But yeah. uh, all parts of socialization. So you really want to be able to handle these animals where like nothing is sacred, and that way you end up having a reliable animal that we trust. Because I mean, I'm I'm not literally paying any attention to her. And this is a fair size animal, you know, probably 15 foot snake. That uh, you know, you have to respect what it, it's capable. Of. It is armed with some nice teeth and it's very powerful. But <laughs> by choking. doing all the socialization stuff. And that's including getting shed. This is this this it just doesn't even make any sense. Uh, you're a snake expert. I'm a snake expert. S shedding a snake like this is is nothing. And yeah, it's, uh, it's not going to hurt them. I, I guess we're just in the day and age where we need to find something to be offended by. Yeah, it, it is and weird. It's I just troubling. always really weirded out about that because really I think that from a husbandry standpoint, if your snake does get stuck and shed. You know, the practice is to probably soak it and help it shed. You know, you don't want that shed to be on there. That can be detrimental. So we took something that is a, a protocol that you should be doing, and we kind of villainized it. Is it like, don't do it. The fact that I'm even aware of this is pathetic. Yeah. This is really stupid because it all started from a Bones Python video. Where and Joe we were, Rogan yeah, we, posted we were, yeah. yeah, well, it was... It was our video. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I remember the animal, just the bones python in the other room, just getting shed by one of my guys, and he just captured it on video. 
And, and that was very interesting, but then there has to be people to get offended. But the fact that I even know that this is actually now a point or talking point about shedding snakes and you shouldn't be doing it, to me is ridiculous. It if is. we're in that day and age and we're really getting down to this point and my level of keeping and your level of keeping, you don't even think about things like this, but no, I guess... It's weird. And, and again, you know, I mean, in my career, and I'm sure your career, I've helped shed tens of thousands of snakes. Yes. You know I mean? Because that's what you do. These are giant predators that we're keeping, trapping in a box, keeping in captivity, but we've produced these. Uh, we're responsible for them even being here. And, you know, like all the golden childs here in the country. Got the animal, paid the good money, was able to breed it, prove its genetics, and make it available for the market. But... I would know what's good for the, the, you know, the welfare, the basic welfare of these animals. And now we're talking about putting rubber balls and, and yeah. bells and stuff like that in cages. And um, I can't even believe this is like real. So that is something I think we're in a day and age of that is concerning. And I'm not saying that we can't all come up with new ideas. And I'm always aware of how intelligent these guys are. I'm always learning. And I've certainly... As the years have gone on, I've undervalued you know certain things, and I'm like, ah, rethink things. But some of the stuff is way extraordinary yeah. now. We're going way overboard, yeah. and um, that is it is troubling to see how people respond to stuff. Like you're telling me you you open a snake cage. Hey, look at Daisy or whatever. I'm going to clean this cage. So you open up the cage. You assess. Oh, the snake went to the bathroom. It's dirty. It's not trash. This yeah. cage, just like this snake cage, is trash because she just shed. And then somebody looks at that picture, oh, see how whatever? Yeah. That is so unrealistic. Yeah. That is, I can't even believe that that's even a, another talking point. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's funny because I had some friends over from Canada um, a while back, and, and I was glad that they were here because they did some YouTube stuff, and, oh, he's eating the shed. Don't ever eat sheds, kids. The best way to get the freshest shed is to peel it from the snake at the same time. Mm. Yeah. Poking the bear, man. Poking the bear. I think Brian likes that we're doing this. Dude, I had emerald tree boa. You don't even know. It's exquisite. It's good. Bones, bones python is pretty snazzy, too. Kenyan samboa, Eric's Lavergi. It's not that good? No. Nah. Nah, it's yeah. thick. You could just tell. You could tell. I mean, it has you know. sand in it. It's a, yeah. You don't sample your snake snakes, guys? Dude, uh, what's wrong with you? No, I haven't done that yet. You, you know, you know what you I haven't gotten past the fecal yet. I, that's, I'm, I'm getting through all the species. Hey, how many times have you had, yeah. Brian? How many times have you had your snakes or reptiles made you sick? Have you had salmonella from never snakes? Once, never once. Never once. Nor have I. And I guarantee you, I've ingested more snake stool than most people on the planet. Oh. You know, I mean, it's, it's a fact. It's just true. I mean, you know, just during the, not only you know, have I got pooped in the mouth, I've gotten, but also, you know, sometimes you get pooped. And you I got potty know, mouth, bro. Yeah. yeah. Bro. But no, and I, I, I've, I've said this before. You know, honestly, I have never went to the hospital one time for an animal-related issue. Nothing. Not a bite. Not salmonella. Not anything. Ever. So they did the snake shed video. Oof. I need something to drink, but anyways. <laughs> I don't know if you're, and you're like, why is Kevin eating shit? I don't yeah, know if you actually saw the video. I saw, oh, I saw it. I you're saw like, it. Let's Probably. go get some Kevin. And I'm like, whatever, I don't care because. I was just I, messing I like with you. I like Jeremy's. Yeah, yeah, Donnie do brought it. me. Sh I was just saying it to be like extreme. Like, eat the shit. And he did it. I was like, wow, that's crazy. That's awesome. All we yeah. had to do is ask. I'm like, aware of the drama. We I can't do sensational stuff like you did to start your channel. I know, so we got to right? do other stuff. Yeah, it's it's now it's not 2008 anymore. It's what right. it is. 2008. So true. 2008. You Jeremy, you know, he came, he came and did some snake bites videos. Yeah. Back then, you we could do anything. anything. Yeah. And, and that sort Talking of things I always... Dumpster, dude. Jeremy! Yeah, Brian, what's up? I can't find my egg book. You want me to help you look for it? No, I don't want you to help me look at it. Get, get your the ladder. I need you to get up there. Inventory every egg. Mark it down in this book. And don't, I swear to gosh, you screw this up, it's gonna be your ass. You hear me? <laughs> I always talk about it, it's funny, like people- He does always talk about that. Yeah, I do talk about that, but also, no, I talk about the well, fact I mean, that yeah. people will say like, oh, Brian, I remember when you were educational, now you're whatever, and I always say like, have you watched my older videos? Like, we're we more educational now than ever. Stuff like, in the world. Yeah, now we're like pretty educational, and we try not to do a lot of sensational things. And I think that where you run into some issues is that people will think like a title and a thumbnail means your video is sensational. So, oh. since Brian pretty much has the largest social media presence of anybody in the reptile industry, 
Brian built a lot of his videos on um, with the chewy and yep, the, the yep. bite. There's yep. a lot of biting yep. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> And um, I think basically, when Brian was doing these videos, we need something exciting. We make make talking points, and so you're getting bit bit by an Amazon tree ball, and it's like you're you're getting bit, and you're just like, ha, ah, it's nothing. Yeah. It literally is nothing. So ultimately, in more modern time now, I'm very sensitive to that kind of stuff, only because you know, an insurance company hears, oh, you have a python, oh, we can't insure yeah. you, oh, you have a boa, you have any of these things, so. Over time, the only change has been is the public perception of these yeah. animals, and I've become incredibly sensitive working with US ARC and trying to fight all this different stuff. So I've noticed that you, like the videos you used to do, you know, like extreme, you know, Python yeah. lunging, and I get all that because I, we see all that stuff. We're here, the day to days, yeah. and I have to just at some point, because I'm involved in all the, you know, the legal stuff. And I'm also trying to think about the community of other keepers and stuff, and I don't want to do things that would ultimately be used against me. So I don't do live feed videos, right, yeah, even right. though it happens. But I do love rodents. Yeah, oh, and I, I don't know how you. Well, um, I, I like. I literally. I think rodents are one of the coolest animals. I, I really do, and I have a, a great respect for a lot of life. Even like you know, if I'm walking, I try not to step on an ant. Yeah, well, literally, my crew knows bugs, like, it, folks. I love bugs. I always tell my crew, like, dead serious, I mean, we do have to feed live, we don't film it ever, but I always talk about the fact that, like, if you mistreat or, or feed a rodent, I ask, will lose my mind. Ask my I mean, people. Like, like, ask my people. It doesn't people. matter if it's going to get eaten, it's got, it's a, it's a life until it, it does. And you you have to have it. respect for these things, and, uh, so. But to your point, I get what you're saying, and, and I always say this, you know, like, I agree with you. In the early days, number one, things were so different. But, Absolutely. But we did, uh, well, let me start by saying we never intended on getting bites. What happened was on the third or fourth Snake Bites episode, we, uh, we, we decided, I was a big Mythbusters guy, right? And we decided to bust the myth, would, a lemon, would lemon juice uh, curtail a snake from biting? And so we gave Chewy a little piece of lemon, and he got bit, and it was hilarious. And people reacted like it was the best thing in the world. And that kind of parlayed into getting bit quite often. And in those early days, the way, listen, the way, I think you can correct the way you think. And what I mean by that is in the early days, I did look at it as like, look, we're getting bit and laughing about it, showing people it's not a big deal. Yes. That being said, as time progressed, I realized it was a bad thing for the hobby. And I stopped doing it. And it was in, in the day and age. And it's so rapidly becoming like on YouTube, like I love prank stuff, like yeah. Twins TV. Yeah. And I watch these bait fights and all this stuff. And I just think they're so hilarious. And now it's gone. And it, this is happening very, very fast. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. things have changed in our industry. And you know, just, if I could just show, you know, snakes biting me and I'm just ha 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 laughing. I'm kind of trying to show you that it's not like a big deal, and I'm not saying I wouldn't even do that in a video, but I, I'm really against the live feed videos because uh, the audience, some of the audience is going to be there just because they enjoy watching smaller animals yep. get abused and stuff. And I, I not that saying you're into that. No, I don't no. ever see, I don't ever see the innocence of that. I just no. don't see, do you know I don't that, any reason to relish do you know that. that I probably in. 15 years, and unfortunately a lot of live stuff gets fed over the course of that 15 uh -huh. years. I have never once watched a snake beat, attack a rat ever. I may keep an eye to make sure things are okay, but as soon as it strikes, I turn away. I have never So I, I have a real problem with it. And I, by um, the way, the other thing is, in, in the 2,000 videos we have, never once a live feed. Yeah, so I mean, they're, they're as humanely as possible being euthanized. And we, we buy a lot of our rodents, you know, from uh, companies that, that basically this is what they do. Yeah. So they, they have it down. What company? Uh, rodent Pro. I was going to say. Sponsored by it. Rodent What's Pro. That? Sponsored by Rodent Pro. Because and we're also going to be sponsored Cafe. by. Hey, shout out for us. We're going to be sponsored by Animal Plastics and we're working with that. But I, as a reptile keeper, and I'm also a rodent breeder, I have a strong affinity for rats. Yeah. I really do. Mice, I, I like mice too, but. Deer mice, especially, but rats and jurds and all like other things. I can show you my jurds. Oh my god, my jurd. Have you ever seen a jurd? Oh, my Fat, yeah, yeah, super Fat tail, yeah. yeah so super. I go, What are you making face? Check out my jurds. Sorry, I'm yeah. you check out my jurds, Brian. No, no, so um, I think Damn that, so I think that, uh, I, I oh my gosh, they're so, so cool. I think that's one of the most 
damaging thing to us as hobbyists because yeah. to the common person, they may think we actually keep these animals because we love to watch these predators kill their food and that's oh that's so so we're so, so sensitive to the yeah. point where i'm like like a cheating vegan now because yeah. i don't want something to die every time i want to eat yeah. so i've kind of like it's just because it's a personal choice but um my point back is you know the, the bite thing so people like just just some of the people that are still you know he doesn't like bite me either. and it's like wow he doesn't do that anymore I don't do it the only time that we'll ever see a bite which is rare very rare actually is when it actually happens i think i you think know, that's, that's i think that's fine you know? because but, but yeah we won't ever set up a bite. and especially Personally, i will say my son does it every now and then but that's a whole nother thing but uh <laughs> no but i'm, I'm just saying it's yeah. not like oh watch you know this big giant python you know like bite us for no reason or whatever no, no and then no, yeah. you know you get the thumbnail even though you probably get great well, it's, viewership it's really, yeah, it's really weird because like i said like 10 years ago the same people that thought it was like funny now are really like really against it which is fine i don't care about that but like i said i think we can evolve and i've, I've evolved to the point where i realized it was I, I can't take away the past but uh but i've shown through uh my actions that we've took right but you, you understand how so it yeah. just it's gotten sensitive but yeah. it's like snake bites happen so like if you are managing animals and they do bite you and you just have to be filmed and you can talk about it but i i don't want people to think that a, you know snake bite is necessary this horrific event or why no, it happens i generally deal with the stuff and i almost never get bit at all yeah. so it's just i don't get bit hardly yeah you know or it's just and like you're flowing in, when i yeah. say flowing and all that kind of yeah, stuff and we, and we have people come in almost every weekend that want to get bit and i won't do it i'm like no you can't they're like i'm just curious what a snake bite is and i'm just like i can't let you get a bit so I you know i guess i go like this i go i will demonstrate a, a young ball python bite yeah yeah there, there you is. go there it is it's like there they are yeah yeah and they're like really and i'm like yeah so i my, my point was just like how you have become aware how sensitive things are. You've adjusted yep. that. And, you know, there's just some people that just like, I don't know, they just can't well, get over it because we're always responsible for anything we've done in life. Well, that's and the we've thing. Always can, done things I that, could do, you know, the thing is, is like I could go about this where I'm trying to hide the past. And I won't do that. I never delete a video. I never delete comments even. Even a really bad comment, I won't delete that bad comment unless it's like, you know, illegal comment you know like someone saying something that they're doing illegal or something like that but uh but my point is is that i don't shy away from like that. shedding snakes like shedding, that should be illegal spider ball python g should be illegal we have to start creating laws to ban morphs this is our you know our our rights or as animal keepers it's we're losing yeah. so much well, just... yeah tomorrow a bill could pass that could wipe us out completely you know that's my biggest fear when i think about things as i'm building you know, the reptile zoo experience, my biggest concern is one day legislation coming down that would shut me down. And and not be for me personally, of course, I love what I do, but more about knowing how many people's lives we touch every time we're open and how many people check. I mean, the one thing I'm telling you, dude, and I've told you a million times, I think you should open up a place, is that every time we're open, multiple people come in that are unbelievably afraid of snakes and they leave holding every snake in the place. You know, they start by touching a snake, then they hold a small ball python. Next thing you know, they've got a 12 foot Burmese around their neck. And it's crazy to us, the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, thousands of people since we've been open, that that's happening. And that's my fear, is that will legislation ever pass? So but there is there is legislation it. right now that keeps on going, it's going from state to state in the New England yep, area. So no you get these lobbyists, the no touch, yeah, no wild touch. animal thing, you cannot make any money from this. And all, so it means a corn snake. Yeah. So they're, they're, they'll talk about elephants. They're going to argue no one should be near a tiger or an elephant. But then when you start looking at the, yeah, the they wording, had, they it's literally a corn snake, yeah. a they ball had, python, they, a leopard gecko, a bearded dragon. In Chicago, they literally had the word tortoise in the legislation. Like you can't touch a tortoise because it could potentially be harmful. Like a freaking tortoise. Damn an elephant. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, no, it's really crazy. I mean, and you're right. I, I always say that what concerns me isn't, I mean, certainly I'm always concerned about the federal level, but I'm more concerned about the state level. I'm more concerned about the local city level. You know, thankfully our city that we're in is great to us, but, but that doesn't mean that the state doesn't come down and do something crazy. To be dead honest, I don't like everybody. You right. kind of <gasps> probably know that, right? What? And I don't. <gasps> so, you, yeah, it's like it's a big secret. <laughs> and and uh, I, it really bothers me when I see somebody that 
you have a huge audience that loves you to death, big time. But when I see these naysayers, it bothers me because I'm just like, what are you talking about? Like, the, the, you know, and I'm like, I don't understand. It's like, I've known Brian for all these years and I see something of Brian and he's not fooling me. And I see him for what he is. He's been the same all these years. And it bothers me that you are being maligned and people are just, I, I can't stand that. I, I just, it's, so I keep going on about it because yeah, of it's that. It's tough, you know, but it's also just the cross you bear when, for whatever reason, I mean, it, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, I, I've said it a million times, like, you know, uh, and again, you know me for all these years. So for the first 25 years, I was like the golden child of reptiles, right? Like no one ever said anything bad about me. And if someone dared to say something bad, they'd have a hundred people beating them up. And it was weird because it went from that to like being the most hated guy, like that. I mean, it was like literally like overnight. Success. Was, and our industry turned on Brian in many really, ways. Really, really, really. It is really amazing. Bad. What's really interesting about our industry is we love to target the top people. So somebody who's doing something, I get targeted all the time. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing, when I get targeted for projects, it only gives me the energy to follow it through and then prove people yeah, wrong. Yeah, prove people wrong, yeah. But it's, we are really nasty. We well, are in this, our, our inside. We, we are just yeah. falling apart from the inside. Yeah, and we can talk about it on the podcast yeah. too, but I've said like, I've, I've made mention of this, like if you look at most industries, and I've, 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 I've made it analogous to, to tattooing, okay? If you take the tattoo community and you look at the best tattooer from the 1950s, right? And then you look at his work today, yeah, yeah, yeah. it doesn't stand up. It's horrible. But yet the tattooers that say that are legends will still look at him as a legend, right? Because he paved the way for us. And if you think about the reptile industry, as sad as it sounds, all of the legends in the reptile world always get vilified. I mean, or ignored, you know? And that's why, you know, people don't know who Bob Clark is, or they don't know who Mark Bell is, they don't know who Pete Call is, they don't know who uh, you know, Lloyd Lemke and, 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 and the list goes on, Tom Lamont. And, Gary and, Separately. Yeah, Ernie Wagner, you Ernie, know what I mean? You know, Ernie it's Wagner. like, you know, these are guys. Ed that, Chapman. Ed Chapman, yeah, I mean. Florida, I got dude. To, I got to, I was on, he was on the show. Ed Chapman was, was wonderful was to me. Good. That's a day of, like, you know, Crutchfield. Crutchfield is the gr great grandfather of it all. Not, at but least, at least Crutchfield was smart because he reinvented himself in later days as a social media guy. And that's why everyone knows who Tom is. Whereas, like you said, the Ed Chapmans of the world, other than the fact that, you know, he's on my Venom Hunter show. Um, uh, not my Venom Hunter show, but the show that I was on. Uh, you know, those guys didn't do that. They just kind of faded off. But, but you know, the reptile industry never... Uh, you know, held up the legends. It's like these guys paved the way, and it's kind of weird, you know, because mo in most cases those people were uh, tore down. You know, the, the legends. You know, why do you think Mark Bell doesn't have anything to do with the reptile industry? It's because the reptile industry crapped on him when he needed it. You know, and and um, and, and that's a tough thing. You know, I, I mean, it's not everybody, but and that's why I was appreciative of Jason when he did the video, kind of standing up. I mean, yeah, he took some 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 flack for standing up for guys like us. And I never understood why other people didn't do it. Or I shouldn't say uh, many people. Some did, you know. Uh, Miguel, uh, you know, it always did all in pythons. Did Brian Cusco did? Other people certainly did Brian. too. But uh, but a lot of people just turned to their their. You know, as a matter of fact, I had people that told me point blank they were afraid to like a picture of mine because they would come up yes. that it, their name liked my my thing, and they were concerned because they would get so much hate for liking my video, uh, which is shocking to me because. It just doesn't make sense. And you've known me since I was 20-something years old. Like, in my life, nobody's ever hated me. Nobody has ever hated me in real life. You know, only in this weird, you know, space I'm in right now. But, but it doesn't bother me. It doesn't detour me. It just, like you with the, uh, the um, motivation to work a project, I use the hate as motivation <laughs> yeah. to keep going and to just prove yeah. that I can still achieve even if, if people want to vilify And you me. definitely have to have thick skin, which you've really learned. Oh, I've learned. They love it when it bothers you. And now that it doesn't bother me, it's kind of taken most of the energy away, you know, because I laugh. I don't laugh. I just kind of ignore when somebody says something negative towards me because it doesn't affect I me. I had a little, little bit of a time when we were first doing some stuff that Donnie was doing, and I was like, I think probably around spider all the time, and, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, uh, and then I'm like, I go, I can literally argue this with like logic and your, you know, all this different stuff, and then I'm like, okay, how am I going to get myself over this? And I go, I envision the switch, and I just go, 
And as, and as long as I can visit the stretch, I'm out. And I'm like, oh, you, you really are wonderful. You seem like a very pleasant person. So I just kind of just like, <laughs> I do that and I can just like shut it right off and just, you know, yeah. whatever. Well, that's what and, you got not, do, not engage not, him. Not, you know, what someone once said that told me um, that, uh, you know, when you, when you walk out of a bar and you see a bar fight, you don't know who caused the bar fight. So when you're online and you see people fighting online, you don't know who the asshole is and who the other person is. So the best thing is not fight. Just walk away. 